get here? I would say in one word, ignorance. We forgot who we were, the way we did things, the way we thought and acted with one another, the way we proceeded in the world. That cultural ignorance has a lot to do with where we are now. We also got here because we forgot our struggle and our experience. The reason we breathe here now is because folks who came before us died and sacrificed their lives. We didn't get here through the benevolence of white folk and we didn't get here by voting. We got here because people protested with their life for better conditions for African people. And the third ignorance is the ignorance of white supremacy. It is the ignorance of not understanding how the world in which you operate actually exists. We are losing because we are trying to equate the African struggle with everyone else's struggle. Now you can respect, you can respect the feminist fight, you can respect the LBGT fight, you can respect the Arab, the East Indian fight, you can respect all these other cultural fights, but you don't put them on the same playing field as yours. None of these groups, none of these groups, Let's, let's understand something. If you're African, there's a stage in your struggle that neither the lesbian, the feminist, the Arab, or the East Indian, or the Latino ever had to experience. They went from oppression to fighting for equality and acceptance. The African did not go from oppression to fighting for equality and acceptance. We had a third stage, and that stage was humanization. We had to prove we were people before we could fight to be equal. We had to prove we were people before we could fight to be equal. We're not fighting for the right to cohabitate with someone. We're not fighting for equal wages with men. We're not fighting for the right to have our culture accepted. We're fighting for the right to exist, to breathe, to live. You don't let another group's mission make you think that it is as important as yours. We suffer because we are not our own priority yet. We make everyone else's issue more important than mine, which is to say we suffer for not being unapologetically African. Can we give you another clap, please? Real push out. We are suffering because of institutionalized, the institutions around us. Yes, you can name them out. We are suffering because of institutions. We're not suffering because of accident, because of the youth. I, and by the way, I love the exuberance of the youth and them talking up for themselves and saying they're on the mission and they wish to make things better and they, and they used to come together. I love that when they use them, yeah? Uh, we're not here to, we want to see the youth them rise. My daughter is 11 years old. She's never been to a Babylon classroom. You understand? Her name is Reggae. It's not, a, it's not one of those names where... Her name is Reggae. It's in her passport. Her name is Reggae. The reason why I named her Reggae is so that she can pass on the legacy. Reggae is love. We fight against corruption. Yes? And it has an infectious baseline with all the world love. But they don't, they, the world love our music, but they don't love us. They love our food, but they don't love us. So that's why we say reset the what? Reset the what? Bless you. Hi, I'm Remember, and I just wanted to ask Dr. Uma to clarify what he meant by that our struggle is more important than the feminist struggle, because I, as a woman, don't, you know, suffer oppression. Differently, I am simultaneously black. And a woman, can we not incorporate feminism into the black struggle? Let's talk about that. First of all, we need to know the roots of the feminist movement as a movement for white women who were struggling. Let me finish. We cannot be emotional, we must be intellectual. The feminist movement was a movement by white women who were fighting against structural oppression imposed by the white male. He did not let her vote. He did not let her leave the house. He told her she could not go to church if she was on her menses. She could not go to college, cannot hold a job. Her place was in a home to cook and to raise the children. So she fought against that. And I understood it because it wasn't fair. 
But when she reached out to the black woman, she didn't do it because she cared anything about your situation. But she simply wanted to use your numerical power to push her agenda. And a mistake was made with black women in the feminist struggle by equating your dynamic with the black man, with the white woman's dynamic with the white male. We don't control if you get a job. We don't control if you leave the house. We don't control if you go to college. The black male, by virtue of his own unique oppression under white supremacy, has never been in a position to dominate the black woman the way the white man has dominated the white female. So we're not saying that there's issues that don't need to be addressed because there are. We have domestic abuse. We have sexism in the black community. You understand? So there's clearly sexist issues. But we would argue that you should fight that from an African womanist perspective, yeah. not a white feminist perspective. Not because the African womanist perspective recognizes that me and the black man are struggling together against a common oppressor. But I reserve the right to address any sexist issues in the black community. But you never let the white woman use you against the black man. Yeah. Unapologetically African. To be not to be emotional, to be intellectual. She's been very intellectual. Yeah, so you cannot come here with this argue of um, this argument of emotionality. Secondly, I think we need to understand feminism different differently. Um, you're speaking to a kind of white feminism, but we've had feminism in Africa, um, which which predates uh, you know like which is which has been pre-colonial. If you look into a lot of African traditions, Mali. Uh, the griot tradition, the jelly tradition of Gambia, Senegal, Guinea, Mali, if you look at the likes of Amikweta, Kumbasidi Be, Umu Sangare, um, in their songs like Musolu, once you understand the language and you begin listening to what, what they sing about in their songs, it's purely feminism, they speak to women's issues, and um, you know the feminist issue is not mutually exclusive to, to the African struggle, you have issues such as circumcision, you have issues like fistula in Africa, and it, it's because of really like sexism and patriarchy, why we have some of these issues. And you know, sometimes like the men, the African men can be oppressors. So it's it's like one and the same. So do not exclude the feminist issue. And it's, it's not a kind of white feminism. This is black womanism, this is black feminism. And uh, just just to repeat this again, please do not come to her with, the, you know, saying that she's, she's responding uh, emotionally. Like, I think she had a lot of respect to ask you the question. Um, on a very intellectual premise, and I would appreciate if, if perhaps some of the other panelists could, could speak to this because I find your stance very problematic, Dr. Adi. And that's okay. Would be very, that's all right. Would be well appreciated. But Thank I'm going to respond since you're responding to me. Number one, but she responded. I'm going to speak first because she responded to me. Number one, your comment on being emotional. I would say the same thing to a black man who I thought was res was reacting with emotion more so than reason. That had nothing to do with her being a woman. That's something that's said to man and woman. As far as black womanism and black feminism, they are not the same. And there are black feminist activists, excuse me, black womanist activists who are trying to clarify African womanism versus a reactionary white female created feminist movement. Secondly, although there have been black women in traditional Africa who articulated the unique issues faced by black women in indigenous African society, they never saw the black male as a cause of their issues. In African culture, we work from family, man and woman together overcoming issues. We do not divide ourselves up by gender and then attack each other. We are a family first people. I would just say that I enjoyed the conversation, and I would also say that we have to have those kind of conversations, as long as they're done with love. There's a tendency to shut out or block out any conversation that's considered sensitive or controversial. And that's one of the reasons why we don't progress ideologically, because we're afraid to go into those little crevices and work out those situations. We gotta have that 
feminist conversation because a lot of people don't know the history of the movement. We gotta have that LBGT conversation. We gotta have that multicultural conversation. We have to talk about why the Pan-African movement must be all African with no non-African membership. These are controversial issues, but they have to be discussed. 